Okay, so we are about to start Chapter 5, Section 7, which is the Pythagorean Theorem. We understand that some of you have already learned this, and some of you have not ever heard of it, but we want to make sure that you get a really good foundation because Pythagorean Theorem is probably one of the most important things that you'll take away from geometry. And you will also use it in every math class from here until whenever you stop taking math. So, let's start. What is the Pythagorean Theorem used for? It is used for finding the length of the missing side of a right triangle. And these are called doodle notes. So, please feel free to be really creative in making these your own notes. Okay, Pythagorean Theorem. Okay, Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher and mathematician. He was the one who actually did the proof of the Pythagorean Theorem. Before we can do Pythagorean Theorem, we need to know what each of the sides of a right triangle are called. For instance, this is the hypotenuse, and these two are legs. So how do I know the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is always the longest. And we're going to find out soon that the longest is always opposite the biggest angle. This is the biggest angle, so that is the longest side. That will be referred to as C, but you'll learn that in a minute. The only triangles that the Pythagorean Theorem will work for are right triangles. will not work for anything but a right triangle. So right over here is kind of a proof of the Pythagorean Theorem. Notice I have a square with sides of 3, area of 9, a square, sides of 4, area of 16, and another square, sides of 5, area of 25. And what this is showing you is that this square plus this square equals this square. So we're going to do something really quickly with um, colors. So this square, ew, fits right in here, if you notice this 3 by 3 square right in here. Plus this square, which is 16 squares, so if I count up, these are 16 squares. So that little yellow square plus the orange square give me this big square. So, notice 9 plus 16 equals 25. So the area of this square plus the area of this square equals the area of this square. But that's not the Pythagorean theorem. It actually says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And notice c is opposite the right angle. Shoot an arrow out of c out of the right angle and that is c. So let's think of this example right here. A right isosceles triangle has legs six meters long each. Find the length of the hypotenuse. So this is an isosceles triangle. It is obviously right, and each of these sides is six. six. So you can imagine I have a six by six square here, and I have a six by six square here. These aren't looking like squares, but you can tell me that the, there are 36 squares here, and there are 36 squares here. So if I were to put that square, like the other one on here, kind of going off my paper, 
I would have 36 plus 36 squares, which is 72. But in this example, it doesn't tell me to find the area of this square. It wants to know the length of the hypotenuse. So if this is the how many squares I have in here, if this is the area of this square, then if I were to take the square root, I would find out what that area is. And if I take the square root of 72, I get 8.5 uh, meters. The problem is, who wants to do that? Draw squares, draw squares, get the area of all the squares, and take the square root. So let's look at what happens when we use the theorem. The theorem says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now what does each letter represent? The a and the b represent the length of the legs. The c represents the length of the hypotenuse which is the longest side. Now let's talk about what this means. It means the area of the square made off the smallest leg plus the area of the square made off the shortest leg is the area of the square made off the longest leg, which is referred to as the hypotenuse. So let's look over here what we have. Let's call this side A, this side B, and this side C. So if I were to fill in the formula, I see that a is x, so a squared, plus b is 8, equals c squared. c squared, which is 13. And if I do the math, which I'm going to do down here, I can't fit it in this box right in here, but you probably can. I'm just going to do it down here. So what I do if I get the math is I get x squared plus 64 equals 169. If I subtract that 64, I'm going to get 105. So x equals, to solve this, to get x, I need to take a square root of both sides. And on my calculator, if I put this in, it's about 10.2. And since these are measured in feet, then I know that this has to be feet as well. So this would be 10.2 feet. So remember, these are doodle notes, so we're going to want to make them colorful, do whatever you want to them. For the length of the video, I don't want it to be too long, so I don't want to fill too much in, but you get the drift. Go ahead and make it personal. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at that example right here. Um, find the length of the diagonal. Okay, I don't know if you know this, but TVs actually, if you go to buy a TV, it actually tells you the length of the diagonal. And um, we actually, so if I buy a 32 inch TV, the length of the diagonal is 32 inches. So how do I find the length of the diagonal? So again, we're going to use A, B, and C. So this guy's gonna be A, this guy's gonna be B, and again, the side opposite the right angle is going to be C. So what we have here now is A squared plus B squared. This time I don't have the C. So if I do the math, it will look like this. I'm going to take a quick square root of both sides so that I can get a plain old c. Remember, I don't, I'm not solving for c squared. c squared is going to be the area of the square that is attached to that side. I only want the side. So if I take the square root of both sides, I get 11.7. And this time we're measuring in inches. Okay, <clears throat> I want to talk about this right here before we go to this example right here. So I want you to know that the theorem works both ways. So 
If our triangle is a right triangle, then we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But also, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then I know it's a right triangle. Remember, that's a that I could write as a biconditional. A triangle is a right triangle if and only if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, because then I could say it backwards. So coming over here to this example, is this a right triangle? Well, then if it is, then a squared plus b squared has to equal c squared. Remember, the most important letter is c. It's always the longest, so this is my c. A and B don't matter, so we're going to make this A, this B, this C. Does A squared plus B squared equal C squared? So if I were to do the math for this, I would find out that A squared plus B squared definitely does not equal C squared. So the sides here would not create a right triangle. So let's just, let's just l learn a little bit of the history. Although Pythagoras is credited with the first proof of the Py Py Pythagorean theorem, it's used in Euclidean geometry, it is believed that Babylonian, Mesopotamian, Chinese, and Indian mathematicians understood the concept before his time. There are many proofs of the Pythagorean theorem, including both algebraic and geometric. So we're going to look at the proof here. Um, we did one with the squares. We're going to do one here. So we're going to find the distance between the points 4, negative 3, and negative 2, 1. So I have plotted the points 4, negative 3, and negative 2, 1. And I'm going to do the distance formula, just like we've been doing this year in math so far. So I take the first x minus the second x squared plus sorry, the second x minus the first x, and the second y minus the first y. Square it. This will give me the square root of negative 6 squared plus 4 squared. This is going to give me the square root of 52. Now, I don't like the distance formula. It's my least favorite formula in geometry. So let's see what we can do to do Pythagorean theorem. But I know with Pythagorean Theorem, I have to create a right triangle. So here's my right triangle. If I were to drop a vertical line here and then connect it to a horizontal line here to connect my two points, I have created a right triangle. And I know the side opposite is C. So I know this side is C, which means this side is A and this side is B. Could I do it where this side is B and this side is A? The legs don't matter. Only the hypotenuse matters. So if I look, A is 1, 2, 3, 4 units long. And B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units long. So I'm going to do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 16 plus 36 equals c squared, 52 equals c squared. If I were to take my square root, I find out that c is the square root of 52. The same answer I get when I do it with the distance formula. So you choose which way would you prefer to do it. See you tomorrow in class.